And I've been practicing for over 30 years, not 40. I, I almost got a heart attack when she said that. <laughs> this case is simple. This case is about choice, informed medical choice. It's about constitutional choice, constitutionally protected choice. Vaccine, the vaccine regime now criminalizes and punishes, especially school children, for the exercise of the most fundamentally protected charter rights. That is to control your own physical and psychological integrity, something that would not be tolerated in any other medical realm, such as forced sterilizations or uh, criminalizing abortion again. This is not dissimilar from that. The vaccine manufacturers warn in their vaccine inserts and warnings with the vaccines that severe injury and death may occur from the vaccines. When those injuries occur, this reptilian government lets the child and the parents languish in the most horrible situation without any support, without any funding, as if to ignore the reality. In fact, they more than ignore the reality. They pretend that they don't occur even though the manufacturers admit that they occur. This is why 19 countries, including the USA and 18 European countries, have vaccine compensation funds. Why do they have vaccine compensation funds? Because they readily know and acknowledge the reality that they do cause injury. Our government pretends that they don't. And so the only jurisdiction in Canada that has a compensation fund is Quebec. Ontario does not have one. Now, in the face of all of this, my client's position is that, like any other medical treatment, the right to choose does not belong to the state. It belongs to the individual in consultation with their physicians. And that right to choose not only has centuries of support in common law, it is now entrenched in sections two and seven of the charter under freedom of conscience, belief, religion, thought, and the right to life, liberty, and security of the person. These are constitutionally protected rights. They're not just common law rights anymore. Only in a police state could you violate a person's body without their informed knowledge and consent. Only in a police state. And that's what this government is doing by making de facto uh, a compulsory vaccine regime without no choice geared to the particular child as assessed by their parents and their medical makeup. Again, this is about choice, constitutionally protected choice. The issue is not going away. No matter how loud the government propaganda and attempts to muzzle people is, the issue is not going away. The government has to deal with the issue and, more importantly, deal with the untreated damage that's been caused and will continue to be caused, not just ignore it. Our children are not a numbers game. So if 93 to 95 percent of children don't get injured or killed, that means nothing to the five to seven percent who get severely injured and killed. They cannot be ignored as statistics to a government program at the behest of the pharmaceutical industry. And so while the manufacturers of vaccines give you a 25 to 42 page insert and warning of all the damage their vaccines can do so they get protected if they ever get sued, the government people who administer the vaccines, most of them never read the inserts, and the children and their parents are never told about these risks, which constitutes further violations to life, liberty, and security of the person under the charter. And so we're going to hold the government accountable by conducting an evidence-based discussion in a court of law.
In the pursuit of the constitutionally protected right to choose and assess the risk without being criminalized or punished. Thank you.